So let's look at guidance for a moment. Like practically speaking, um, what we really encourage, and the people that I live with, we always encourage people to just speak speak their thoughts freely, their hunches, their nudges, their intuitions, their feelings. You know, it's like don't hold back. We don't want you to have kind of a guidance anxiety where everyone's like, I'm not going to speak it because it could be wrong. I could be judged if I say something. And, you know, it's actually, we encourage the sharing of ideas. In fact, let's call this sharing of these ideas suggestions. In other words, the Holy Spirit gives instructions, gives suggestions, but they have to be, even the guidance has to be, we'll call it a suggestion, because the Holy Spirit is not going to coerce you to follow. The Holy Spirit never says, turn right at this traffic light, or else <laughs> you, you're going to get it. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't turn right. No, the Holy Spirit offers the what? Suggestion. Turn right. Why is it a suggestion? Because you, you do seem to believe you have a choice. Mm. Although Ross, Ross will say, the script is written. But if you don't know the script is written, you believe you have choices in time and space. And if you believe you have choices, isn't Jesus very loving? These are suggestions. Guidance is really suggestions. It's offering us suggestions of what would save us from torment and hell. Loving suggestions that will actually lift us out of, of pain, of suffering, of, of delay. It, these suggestions actually save time. They're miracles. They actually collapse time. They bring the Alpha and the Omega back together, the beginning and the end, because they're so loving. Now, I'll give you an example. Some of you, how many in here know my friend uh, Jason? You met Jason. You've met Jason. You, you've met Jason. Well, I went to the 2007 Course in Miracles conference in San Francisco and, and my friend Jeffrey and I were there. We had a room and Jason said, can I come up and stay in your room? And we said, okay. So Jason slept, we had two beds, and single beds, and then Jason slept on the floor. And he was going through a lot of emotions and everything. And, and at the end of the conference, I, he's, Jason said, I really, I want to, I would like to, to travel with you, I would like to be with you and work with you in a more of an active way. He was just really excited and, and kind of uh, inspired. And so, here's an example. He said, okay, I'd, but I don't know what's best. I don't really know my best interest, but I just feel like I'd like to spend more time with you and work with you and everything. And I said, well, just, just be still a moment and see if you hear any words or if there's any intuitions and feelings coming in. That's the way we do it. We just sit, sit still and pray and listen for something. And he did this for a few minutes and then I said, did you hear anything? You see how different that is from telling people what they should do. It's just the arrogance of spiritual teachers that say, you must do this or you're banished from the, the community or da 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 da. It, it was offered as, what are you hearing? And, and he said one word, Australia. That was what he heard at that point. This was at the conference in February 2007, Australia. So, I was like, okay. And he said, what does it mean? <laughs> I said, I don't know, we'll find out. I was actually leaving San Francisco and flying to Australia right after the conference. And, and you know, tickets were bought, gatherings were planned, arrangements were made, da 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 da. He said, does it mean I'm supposed to fly to Australia with you? It's an obvious question if you hear Australia after you've said that and everything. I said, I pray, I said, no, I don't, I don't really feel that. Um, I feel, I'm, I know I'm taking off for Australia, but I don't really feel that. It took, I think it took about a couple years after that before he found himself coming down here, before he found himself being guided to marry Kirsten, who was from New Zealand, before he found himself applying for a five-year visa to reside in Australia, you see, a lot of things came down the pike with Australia. 
So now he's legally married to Kirsten. He's got a five-year visa to be in Australia. He's done tours. He's, that's where he met, you know, numbers of you. Some of us maybe have met him in other places in, in the world, but he's, he's actually been around. He's been down south. He's been up here. I met him up in Toronto a couple of years ago. Yeah. So those, those, a lot unfolded, and, but that was what he heard, was Australia. And it's kind of interesting, because I, I had a feeling when I woke up this morning, I was feeling Australia, you know, the feeling of Australia. And all that means to me is the sense that, that I know I've been used mainly on four different continents, um, and, and Australia is one of those areas. And it just feels, it's like an intuitive feeling about that. Now, how it plays out, it will have to be given. Uh, another example is, um, just to give you an example about planning and the future, is I was in the car with, with uh, Helena and Cecilia and Christian, and I was going through my iPhone and my emails, and I went, oh, look at this, and I read them the email, which was, they had selected now the location for the 2013 Course in Miracles conference in April or May of 2013. And it says, David. It wasn't just a general email, it was David. You know, something about abundant joy and happiness to you and, and so forth. And I read down, it says, we have selected the dates, the possible dates for the conference, and we would certainly like you to be there. Can you hold these dates for us? See how practical we're talking now? We're getting into the practicalities. 2013. So, what that is meant to show is that, when we, it talks about, if there are plans to be made, let them be for one purpose. Let the function of the body be for one purpose. Let your life on earth be for one purpose. And, you can't control the outcome which is best. You, you can't know the the reason for it, like someone could say, well what would be the purpose of going to a conference in 2013, in the spring of 2013? Well, don't try to figure out the answer to that question in a specific way. There is an answer, the answer is forgiveness. The answer is, forgive 2013 <laughs> and let me lead the way. You know, and let me speak through you, shine through you. Don't, don't pay attention to the calendar. Pay attention to my guidance and inspiration, my suggestions, my instructions. That's what this is about. <laughs>